All right, let's go. On. All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, we like to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ. It's your brother, Nakawan Banloya. Brother Zan. All right, so we back here with another lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to go into Yahweh Shai being prophesied in the Old Testament. And we're going to link different precepts that shows Yahweh Shai being referred to as the rock or the stone in the Old Testament. Right. And matter of fact, before we go into that, let's go into Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and. Hey, see the screen uh, clear, right, brother? Uh, yeah, if you could zoom in, though. Zoom in, let me see. Yeah, yeah, calm. Perfect. Calm. Okay. You go ahead, brother. Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. Then I said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. See, so this is, all right, so matter of fact, let's get, let's grab that in, um, What's that in Acts? I think it's Acts 13 or maybe Acts, the second chapter where it calls King David uh, um, a prophet as well. It calls King David like a psalmist, a, a, a psalmist and a prophet. So Psalms 40, I believe it was written by King David. Yep. So Psalms chapter 40, Psalms, the 40th chapter, chapter uh, King David wrote it. Right. And King David a lot of a lot of his songs a lot of his psalms was alluding to yahweh shy and right here in psalm chapter 40 and verse 7 this precept is alluding to yahweh shy because not only was king david you know, a warrior and a psalmist but he was also a prophet and there's a lot of prophecies uh, uh, prophecies in the book of psalms that foreshadows or talks about the coming of Yahweh Shai, right? Um, have you found that, brother? Uh, let me see. I think it's like Acts. It's either like Acts, the second chapter, or maybe Acts 13, cause King David like a prophet as well. Let me see. Let me see. either Acts the second chapter or Acts 13 where it calls King David a prophet. I'm looking in Acts 13 and uh, yeah, I don't know if it's an Acts. I don't know if it's an Acts 13. Uh, Let me look it up real quick. I do see where he was quoting. I don't know if that's what you wanted, but he was quoting Acts, uh, what you just read in Psalms too. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, I, I have it right here. Oh, Acts two. Okay, come. Yeah, Acts two, and let's start in verse twenty-nine. Acts two, verse twenty-nine. It says, "Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, mm -hmm. that is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Mm -hmm. Therefore, being a prophet, see that." Therefore, being a prophet, so Peter, because this is because this is Peter speaking right here in the book of Acts. Therefore, being a prophet, go ahead. And knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Hamashiach to sit on his throne. See that? So David knew that that the heavenly father would raise would raise up unto him out of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, which is a cut to the. Trinitarians, right? Because this clearly shows you that Yahweh Shai came from the seed of David, number one, and it says according to the flesh, meaning what? That Yahweh Shai was flesh, that he was a human, a human being, right? He had a father and a mother, which is father being Joseph, right? But it says that he would raise up Hamashiach to sit on his throne. So a lot of scriptures that we read in the book of Psalms, it may go, it may go over your head. 
if you're not really familiar with the prophecies, right? Even Yahweh Shah said it himself. It's in the book of John somewhere that he, he says to search in the scriptures for it is written of me. So there's a lot of scriptures that that we come across that's in the Old Testament and it's alluding to Yahweh Shah that just goes right over our heads, right? So we're going to go ahead unless you had unless you had a precept to add brother or a point wow. okay con so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna start at daniel chapter two and we're gonna start at verse 40. con big of daniel chapter two and verse 40 mm -hmm. it reads in the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and this iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Right. So this is Daniel, the second chapter. Just to give a quick rundown, this is Daniel. This is Daniel interpreting the dream for King Nebuchadnezzar. He had a dream about a statue, and he was trying to go to the Chaldeans for the for the understanding of the dream, but they couldn't interpret the dream because the heavenly father didn't 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 reveal the secrets unto them. The heavenly father revealed it unto secret, uh, the secret unto Daniel, the dream unto Daniel. So Daniel is just given a rundown on 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 all the major empires that was going to erect from the earth. And this fourth kingdom, which is strong as iron, is dealing with the Roman, the ancient Roman Empire. Right. So go ahead. It says, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, mm -hmm. part of potter's clay and part mm -hmm. of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Right, so verse right, so verse forty one is 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 essentially a spinoff, the fourth kingdom, because the because your feet, right, you have two feet, and how many toes and how many toes do you have on your feet? You have you have ten toes, right? So verse forty one, this is going into the EU, right? Because there were, according to the Bible, right, you have seven heads and ten horns, right? The ten horns and the ten toes is the same thing. Now, when you look it up, history says that the EU or the ECC started with 12 original members. I want to say it was about 12, right? But four, but four of those members were actually operating as one, right? So you had the British and the Irish. There goes, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the British and the Irish, they were they were operating as one. And you also had Spain and Portugal, they were also operating under one umbrella, umbrella as well. So there goes your 10 toes right there. Right. So verse 41 is going into the EU, which that's the current rulership that we're in right now. You know, the NATO and the EU, which America is sitting on top of nato right which is the beast in revelation chapter 17 and this is very important to biblical prophecy right and it also shows you that esau is indeed the so-called white man and is ruling in the last days why because when we go down to verse 44 it's going to show you that this is our last captivity until hamashiach comes back so this is the last captivity that we're in that we're ever going to go through right so so all, so all the guys that say that esau is the arabs <laughs> if, if esau if esau is the arabs bro you would have to show me you would have to show me in history or right now the arabs is sitting is, is sitting or ruling over everybody Right. The Arabs, the Arabs is not ruling over nobody. This is talking about this is talking about the so-called white man. All right. This is talking about the European white man, the Western European, European white man. Right. You have a point, brother? Uh okay, Khan. So read it again from the top, 41. It says verse 41, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, 
Yeah, part you... part. Yeah, so like you're part of Potter's Clay and part of Iron. Talking about how you have some nations within the EU is uh is, is strong and some and some and some are weak. Some are economically and militarily strong, and some are weak. Like for example, the British, uh, um, the British, the Spanish, um, the French. You know, they're they are strong nations within the NATO and the EU. Whereas you have Greece, um, of the Netherlands, you know, they're not so much strong. They would be part of the clay, right? Now, when you read in the Bible, iron, that that is a symbolic, that is um symbolic of strength, right? When you read we, we, when you read the Bible, iron, that's like one of the toughest metal or the toughest metal there is. So go ahead. Con, and I got a preset too. Con, Con, I'll go ahead, hit it. Get the preset? Yeah. Um, This is Mark 3, and I'm going to get to the point in uh, 24. Okay, Con. Con, Mark 3 and 24, red letter. It says, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And the house be divided itself that stand. If Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. You got it, brother. God. So that's just an example. You know, well, Christ, he's breaking it down. You know, at the end, it's, it's going to be kingdom divided against kingdom, right? right. Kingdom divided against itself, right? And it's, it's not going to be able to stand. You know, if you got one side of the kingdom going against another side of the kingdom, it's just eventually it's, it's gonna it's gonna fall man and we, we're gonna read you know more into that yeah yeah exactly which uh last summer you had you had macron which macron he's like the president of france he was saying man he was trying to jump ship over to the uh bricks mm. uh you have turkey you had turkey which turkey they're a part turkey is a part of the eu i believe or both uh both nato and eu they openly put in an application to join the BRIC alliance. So there goes your division right there. They're all not on one accord. And according to Revelation chapter 17, the 10 horns that are on the beast shall hate the horror. The horror is dealing, with, is dealing with America, right? So now let's jump down to verse 44, brother. Come back in Daniel 2 and verse 44. Mm hmm says in the days of these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which see that so see that so after so after the ten toes after the ten toes get defeated right which you can read about that in revelation chapter 12 right about that war in heaven and that's not talking about uh a satan the mosai and michael duking it out right that's talking about Esau's military, you know, NATO trying to fight against uh, Michael and they're going to lose. So after all that, what's going to happen? Read it again. It says, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up mm -hmm. a kingdom, mm -hmm. which shall never be destroyed. See that? And that's some, of, that's some of the kingdom of Israel. It shall never be destroyed. We're going to for all, we're going to always reign on the earth. Why? Because we're going to have the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. The only reason why we're not in rulership right now is because we broke the laws of the Heavenly Father. And us breaking the laws of the Heavenly Father leads to captivity. So, for us not to go into captivity ever again, the Heavenly Father said, you know what? I'm just going to put my laws in you, and you will never go off. So, that's why... It will never be destroyed because we're never going to go off again, right? We're going to be perfect, 100% perfect. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. See that? And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So how in the hell is there is there going to be an ethnic hierarchy? How the hell there isn't going to be an ethnic hierarchy in the kingdom? How is it that the kingdom is going to be comprised of a multi-ethnic group? It's not possible. It just says in the prophecies that the kingdom should not be left to other people. <laughs> Meaning what? That is going to be solely for us. I mean, everybody is going to be in the kingdom, but there's going to be a, but there's going to be a hierarchy. There's going to be a ranking system, a ranking system within the kingdom, and that's how and that's how it's always been 
in every ancient civilization. You, you always had people at the top and then you had people at the bottom. Yeah. And that's how, and that's how, and that's how it's going to be in the kingdom. Pl plain and simple. See, right. see, see, brother, when uh, people think about the kingdom of the most High, they think about some mystical place, right? Everybody's going to be eating cotton candy and whatnot. No, the kingdom of heaven is going to be right here on earth. And the nation of Israel, so-called blacks, Latinos, native and similar Indians, we're going to be at the top, period. Gone. Um, you, you can go ahead and keep reading unless you got a precept or anything or a point. I mean, like the brother's saying, you know, kingdom, get that word in Hebrew. I know it's malak. I don't know if you uh you got the whole word, but malak. I know malak wata, you know, if you okay, read God, the yep. Lord's Prayer, you know, that's, uh you know, uh, let, let the kingdom come. Mm -hmm. But that goes into dominion, right? It says uh, kingdom, royalty, authority, right? So having that authority, you know, that, that, Definition alone goes into the hierarchy. There's no way that a kingdom can exist if there's no subjects to rule over. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. How, how, how is there a kingdom, but everyone's equal? You know what I mean? That just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly, bro. Yo, yo, bro, you, you know what's so crazy? I, you, you know what's so crazy? I, yo, man, Christianity is such a dysfunctional, contradicting a religion, right? Because you will have some Christians they will say that, okay, yeah, there will be servitude in the kingdom. But what about hell, though? I thought everybody that sins, everybody that's not a part of the church of Christ is going to hell. So then how is there going to be servitude in the kingdom <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if, 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 if the people that's not a part of the church are going to be in hell? What, what happened to hell? Huh. See? How does that work? <laughs> how does that work? It doesn't work. Huh? That's how you know Christianity is a dumb religion. Huh. Yep. Well, go ahead, brother. It says, and the kingdom should not be left to other people, mm -hmm. but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall mm -hmm. stand forever. Go ahead. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. This is the point right here. This is for as much as thou sawest the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands. Who is this stone? This is the point. Who is that stone? That stone is talking about Yahweh Shai. That is the stone. And we're going to read a couple of different precepts in the New Testament that calls Yahweh Shai a rock or a stone, right? So let's finish. So let's finish our verse forty-five, and we're going to get these uh, precepts in the New Testament, brother. Khan, it says, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and start at First Corinthians. Chapter one, I mean, slack it. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse one. God. First Corinthians 10 verse one, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all baptized through the sea. Oh, you see that? So why did Paul, now this is the church of Corinth, right? A church in Asia Minor which is, I believe, Asia Minor is like modern-day Turkey, right? He says, moreover, brethren. He calls them brethren. And then he says that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Showing you that the people of the Church of Corinth, this congregation, have to be Israelites. Because why would he say all of our fathers? Why would he say that? If these were actual Gentiles in the flesh. Last time I checked, if you're an actual Greek or an actual Hamite, how can the Israelites of old be their forefather? That doesn't make any sense. Because Paul was putting these Israelite foreigners in remembrance 
that they are the true Israelites. Look, y'all are not Greeks. Y'all are not Romans or whatever you want to identify yourself as. You're Israelites. Your forefathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. Coming out of the coming out of the Exodus. You see? Go ahead, bro. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Mm -hmm. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Mm -hmm. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Mm -hmm. For the drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Hamashiach. See that? It says, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And we are, and we all know that the angel that was that was following us. In the wilderness, that was Yahweh Shai. And Paul re and Paul put the icing on the cake and he says, and that rock was Christ, or that rock was Hamashiach. See that? Yahweh Shai was always around. Right? You have the term called uh Christophany, right? Where matter of fact, let me go ahead and look it up. Christophany. Right, a Christophany. Let me go ahead and pull it up. Right, it says a Christophany is an appearance or non physical manifestation of Christ. Traditionally, the term refers to visions of Christ after his, after his ascension, such as the bright light of the conversion of Paul the apostle. Right, so what are some examples of? A Christophany in the Old Testament. Number one, Yahweh Shai being there, um, being the angel, being the angel in the burning bush, that was Yahweh Shai, right? And what proves that Yahweh Shai said in the book of John, before before Abraham was, I am. So in, in Exodus, the third chapter, I, I, I want to say it is, that I am, that I am, that's talking about Yahweh Shai. All right. What else you had? Um, yeah. So yeah. So that's um, so that was one of them. And you have you have a lot of Christophanies in the Old Testament, right? You have Melchizedek as well. That was also Yahweh Shai, but that's another topic for a different time, right? We can go into that later on. And also, also following the example of justin martyr who identified the angel of the lord with the with the logos or logos which logos that's the greek word of saying word right we read in john chapter one uh the gospel of john where it says in the word was god is the greek word logos or logos it says also following the example of justin martyr who identified the angel of the lord with the logos some appearances of angels in the Old Testament are also identified by some Christians as pre-incarnate appearances of Christ. Yep, and that's and that's true. Yahweh Shai was always around. You got something, brother? Uh okay, calm. So now let's go ahead and get this. Ephesians chapter two, and I'm and start at verse 19. Kind of Ephesians 2 and 19, it says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God, mm -hmm. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shai Mashiach being the chief cornerstone. See that? Yahweh Shai Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. You see how I was calling Yahweh Shai the stone again? Yahweh Shai is that chief cornerstone. Just to reiterate, him being called the stone in the old testament it calls him the rock or or a stone right let's grab this in zechariah chapter 3 and verse 8. Kind of zechariah 3 verse 8 it says hear now o joshua the high priest and thy fellows that sit before thee for they are men wondered at Salakia, for they are men wondered at for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. See, that's our, so let's go ahead and stop here. It says, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Who else is called the branch? 
in the Old Testament. We're going to get it. Let's go ahead and get that. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 23. And let's start at verse 5. Okay. This is the book of Jeremiah 23. Verse both said the Lord, I will raise David a righteous branch. You see that? I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Matter of fact, it's being curious. Let's go into the Hebrew for branch. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says in the Hebrew. Right, sprout, right, growth. Mm, see, it says sprout shoot of Messiah from the Vedic tree, right? So this is clearly dealing with, so this is this is clearly dealing with lineage, right? Right. Who who would be who would be descended from David? That's why Yahweh Shai calls himself what? The uh, offspring in the root of David. Offspring root goes into sprout and branch and growth. You know what I'm saying? Uh. It says, yep, that which grew, yeah, springing, right? So this is literally, all right, this is literal. It's talking about Yahweh Shai descending from the Davidic kingly line, according to the flesh from his father's side, right? Because that's the only way you can be an Israelite. That's the only way you can be an Israelite, right? People try to allude to um, the reason why Yahweh Shai is of the house of David is is um uh, is is uh, because of his mother. Number one, that's how you know Christians. Y'all don't understand um our culture. You don't understand Hebrew is like culture, right? Because anytime, anytime, anytime we name our children, it was for a reason. Mary or Miriam, that's a Levitical name. That's a Levitical woman name, right? You have a lot of Levites that has that name Miriam or Mary. For example, my older sister name is Miriam or Mary. That is a Levitical name. Who else was named Miriam or Mary in the Bible? Moses' sister. Hmm. She was a Levite. We just didn't pull names out the air and start naming our children. We named our children for a reason for, for, for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So when you see a particular Israelite have have a name, like for example, man, the, them Haitians. Matter of fact, them Haitians. Again, going back to Levites, a lot a lot of Haitians have the name John, John Baptiste. A lot a lot of a lot of Haitians have that have that name, have that last name, Baptiste. A common mm -hmm. a common com, common Haitian names is John, uh, spelled J E A N, or they have the last name Baptiste. Why is that? Because John the Baptist was a Levite. Hmm. It's all spiritual. Is is it, there are there are spiritual reasons why um we have we, we we have we have those names. So yeah, so that's a part of our culture. That's a part of our uh Hebraic Israelite culture. You know, we name our children, you know, for a particular reason. Okay. So Miriam, that's a Levitical name. And then number two, according to the Bible, how we determine your nationality is by your pastoral lineage. It's not, but it's not, it's not, it's not by your mom, right? It's, it's determined by your father. Your father determines your determines your nationality. So boom. So let's go ahead and, and read that again. Uh, Jeremiah 23 and 5. Unless you had unless you had anything to add. No, it says uh, Jeremiah twenty three and five. Behold, mm -hmm. the, that the Lord that I'll raise unto David a righteous branch, mm -hmm. and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Go ahead. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. It says, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. All right, Yahweh our righteousness, which. Which goes into Yahweh Shai being Mel Mel uh, Chesedek because when you break down that word or the name Mel Chesedek, it's Malak Tazadak, which means king of king of righteousness, right? And it says in his days, the branch, the righteous branch unto David, Judah, and Israel shall dwell safely, which which lets you know that the small hats, 
can't be the true Israelites, right? Number one, you know, we just seen them going to war with um, what's their names? Ah, uh, uh, they were just at war with uh, Ishmael, right? Mm -hmm. And then number two, this is Judah and Israel. Who's Israel? Israel is dealing with the northern kingdom. And if you ask a small hat, what happens to the northern kingdom? They have a stupid look on their face. Oh, bro, we don't know. Oh, oh they're scattered. <laughs> they don't know. And that's so that shows you, so that shows you that they can't be the real, the true Israelites. Because both kingdoms, and, and number one, we won't be separated as two kingdoms anymore in the kingdom, right? We're going to be one again. It just it's just going to be the nation of Israel. Ain't going to be no more southern kingdom and northern kingdom. It's just going to be the nation of Israel again, right? We can't uh, the, the southern kingdom can't be over there, o over there without them, and vice versa. Period. Point blank. So they are not the true Israelites. We are the true Israelites, All right? So we're gonna go back to that Zechariah, the third chapter now, and let's read verse nine. Come, Zechariah three verse nine. Mm -hmm. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. You see that? So again, it calls, it's calling Yahweh Shai the stone. The stone shall be seven eyes. Now, what are those seven eyes? We're going to go ahead and read it in Revelation on the fifth chapter. Right, it's going to demonstrate who the stone is and who are those seven eyes. Revelation five, and let's start our verse. Let's start our verse four. I. Come. This is a uh, Revelation five verse four. It says, "And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon." And one of the elders said unto me, "Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah." The root of David. Ah, ah, here it go. And that's spirit, bro. Yeah, there, there it go. The root, the root of David. You see? That's spirit. Matter of fact, let me just go into that word for root real quick. I did, I've, I've totally forgot that it was even in there. I had to pull it up, but I totally forgot that it was even in there. Yeah, the root. Yeah, see? That's the same, that's the same thing that it says in the Hebrew for a uh, branch. Ah, it says that that which like a root springs from a root yes yeah, sprout shoot then it says then it says metaphorically offspring progeny you see that offspring progeny so so that's telling you that yahweh shai is of the offspring of david he's of that davidic kingly line you see what i'm saying yep uh -huh. okay so go ahead brother it says one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to mm -hmm. loose the seven seals thereof. Yeah. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, mm -hmm. which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. You see that? Stood a lamb as it had been slain. Who is that lamb? That was slain. Yahweh Shai, right? I think it was Nathaniel in the book of uh, in the book of John, chapter one. It says, Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, right? This is the Lamb that had been slain. And it said, What? Having seven horns and seven eyes. Did not the book of Zechariah said that? The mm -hmm. book of Zechariah said that that stone had seven eyes. Right, and it says, which are the seven spirits of the heavenly father sent forth into all the earth, which that's talking about uh on the chief, the chief angels of the most high, right? The art of the archangels. You, know, you got Michael, you got Gabriel, Raphael, right? The chief, the chief angels. But this just shows you this this correlates with Zechariah chapter three. That stone is that lamb that had been slain, having ha having the seven horns and seven eyes. See that? So um, that's really it on that. You know, that's all the precepts concerning Yahweh Shai being called uh, the stone or the rock. Um, hopefully, you brothers and sisters were edified. We're going to go ahead and salute out on that. We give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh.
we do so in the name of the only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, for the world of Christ Jesus Christ, and Shalom. Shalom.